Yeah. The Breakfast Club, bitches. Who's donkey of the day today? Well, donkey of the day for Monday, September 17th goes to comedian Cat Williams. Now, if you missed it this weekend, Cat Williams was a guest on Frank Ski and Wanda's morning show. Drop on the clues bombs for Frank Ski and Wanda. Frank Ski has always been good to the Breakfast Club, always showed us love. Salute mm-hmm. to that man. Uh, I respect everything he does in business and in the game of radio. The reason I can respect that man is because unlike Cat Williams, I am not a bit-ass hater. See, that's all Cat Williams was doing on Freak Skin and Wanda show, hating with a side of lion. Matter of fact, that wasn't a side of lion. Cat Williams served us two entrees during that interview. One was a main course of fresh chicken pot lie. The other was stir-fried hate. Okay, what dish would you like to revisit first? Uh, let's start with the chicken pot lie, okay? This is Cat Williams on Frank Skin and Wanda running down some of his resume. Let's hear it. I do have more comedy specials than any comedian breathing or dead. That's only seven more than Richard Pryor. And six more than Martin Lawrence and six more than uh, Chris Rock. Five more than Dave Chappelle. Those are just facts, sir. I have the top two comedy specials on Showtime, HBO, Comedy Central, and we just moved to Netflix. I'm on my 15th consecutive 100 city tour. On the exact day that Monique was asking for a Netflix boycott, Netflix had just cut me a check for $2 million for the special that I got paid $300,000 to do in Jackson. <laughs> Pimp Chronicles has already grossed over $24 million alone as one special because of Atlanta. What are your honest thoughts about Netflix? Well, everybody has to understand that Netflix doesn't have an opinion on stand-up comedy. They base what they pay you by the amount mm. of ticket sales for your last tour. I so like Monique's that. last tour had 316,000 tickets. Mm-hmm. Therefore, that's what she got offered. My last tour had 2.4 million tickets. tickets. And so that's what the offer was. Now, uh, let's unpack some of this. We, we live in the information age. There is nothing you can't Google. But a lot of us don't take the time to research. Uh, you know, we hear someone we respect say something in an interview. We read something someone posts on social media, and we run with it as fact. And the fact that Cat Williams said these are facts solidifies it for some people. Uh, the reason I hate situations like this is because when you have the experience that Cat Williams has, you should be using your opportunities and experiences to teach, not lie. Now, let's break down some of these lies, okay? Cat Williams said he has filmed, he has more film stand-up specials than any comedian breathing or dead. That is a lie. George Carlin has 14 HBO specials. Cat Williams said he has nine specials. George Carlin, 14. We can all do math in here, right? Okay, next. He said he has the top two specials on HBO, Showtime, Comedy Central, and Naughty on Netflix. I don't even know what that means. Okay, all right. But you can Google the top 10 stand-up specials over the last 40 years on HBO Go or HBO Now. Chris Rock has number one with Big and Blacker. Number two is Tig Notario, Boyish Girl Interrupted. Number three is Dave Chappelle, Killing Him Softly. Comedy Central has a list of top 100 stand-up comics and Cat not even on the list. I couldn't find the Showtime stand-up special rankings and my people at Showtime haven't hit me back yet. But by now, we should be noticing a pattern here. So it's safe to say that was a lie too. Cat Williams said Pimp Chronicles is gross $24 million, all right? So far. Now, Pimp Chronicles did great, but where did you get the $24 million number from, Cat? We would like to see receipts because if Pimp Chronicles grossed $24 million, it would be in the top 10 of stand up comedy concerts ever, but it's not. In fact, if it grossed $24 million, it would be number four on that list over Kevin Hart, What Now, which grossed about $23 million. Martin Lawrence, Run Tell That, which did like $19 million. Richard Pryde, Here, Here and Now, which did $16 million. All I'm saying is, if Cat Williams really did $24 million on Pimp Chronicles, how come nobody has any record of that but Cat? Oh, and Cat did tell the truth when he said Netflix only cares about ticket sales. His business is never personal. I told you all that earlier this year in regards to the Monique situation. But Cat Williams said he sold 2.4 million tickets on his last tour. Do y'all know how much 2.4 million tickets sold is? I'm trying to put this in perspective for you. If Cat Williams sold 2.4 million tickets on his last tour, that's more than Beyonce sold for her Formation tour. That's more than Taylor Swift sold for her 1989 World Tour. That's more than Madonna sold for her MDMA tour. That's more than the Eagles sold on their Long Road Out of Eden tour. That's more than Justin Timberlake sold on his 2020 Experience World Tour. That's more than Billy Joel sold on his Billy Joel and Concert Tour. And these are artists who are doing this globally around the world in arenas. So tell me how it's possible for Cat Williams to sell 2.4 million tickets domestically in theaters. If Cat sold 2.4 million tickets, he would have made the Forbes list. 
See, Kat, you sound smart to a dumb person, and there's a lot of people out there who won't take the time to research, and I know you're asking why was Kat lying so much. I'll tell you why. Because he knew he was about to start hating on people, so he had to show y'all he out here still winning so it wouldn't look as if he was hating because the truth is it's rare that you will have a hater that's doing better than you. Now, let's listen to what Cat Williams had to say about Kevin Hart. No, let me, let, me, let me rephrase. Let's listen to what Cat Williams had to hate on about Kevin Hart, Gerard Carmichael, Little Rel, Hannibal Burris, and Tiffany Haddish. Let's hear it. They're going to let you do your special, Gerard Carmichael, but nobody's going to watch it. They're going to let you be a star, Little Rel, but you're ugly. <laughs> and white people don't believe in ugly stars. They think you have to be somebody that women want to sleep with and men want to be. But because we black, they say, oh, you don't even deserve that. So you get Kevin Hart, Lil Rail, Gerard Carmichael, all in a row, Hannibal Burris, just dudes that no woman would talk to in Lenox Mall, something. let alone you making a movie stars. Let's let's keep going. Roll into Tiffany. Go. She's been doing comedy since she was 16. You can't tell me your favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. Why? Because she ain't done a tour yet. Mm -hmm. She ain't done a special. She has not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour to nobody. Did you think she wrote Girls Trip Goofball? Or do you think that was already a script and they handed it to her? It's up to you, whatever you want to believe. But people so, like real, I'm, and that's why they that like what her. They, they like they love real. Oh, because everybody's real then. So don't trip. No, no, tip. They like wherever Tiffany you Haddish at under the sound of my voice. Real. Do you have a real core worker? <laughs> right. Do you have a ratchet friend? Do you right. have a sister? Do you have a cousin? <laughs> do you have a nephew? <laughs> do you have a niece? Is they so ghetto? When did that become marketable? Knock it off. They like her because she want to sleep with a white. Right, man. Now, it's one thing to have an opinion, right? It's another to just hate. Cat had zero opinion on Lil Rel's talent, Gerard's talent, Hannibal's talent, Kev's talent. He was just hating. If you would have said, I don't find any of them funny, I don't know why people like them, I think these individuals are funny or cool, that's an opinion. But what does Rel, Gerard, and Hannibal being ugly got to do with anything? Who cares if pe girls would walk past them in Linux Mall? What that got to do with their talent and them being funny? Not to mention, uh, Tiffany Haddish has a stand-up special called The Hood to Hollywood on Showtime. She's been on tour for a year. She's got another stand-up coming on Netflix next year. Like, what's the point of lying the way Cat Williams is lying? And those white Hollywood executives that like Kevin, Gerard, Rel, Hannibal, and Tiff, uh, that's not the talent's fault the white executives like them. I mean, damn, Cat, they used to like you, too. But then you became an uninsurable liability because you couldn't stay out of trouble. Simple as that. You became a liability to Hollywood. Cat Williams... I need you to know that destiny is not a matter of chance, it's a matter of choice. And Cat Williams, you chose drugs over your career. Those are the facts, sir. So kids, what is the lesson to be learned from all of this? Well, always remember, someone who hates you normally hates you for one of three reasons. They either see you as a threat, they hate themselves, or they want to be you. Cat Williams, look in the mirror and ask yourself, which one are you? Please give Cat Williams the biggest ER. <laughs> all right, it's not rocket science, people. Charlemagne the God here, and today's Donkey of the Day is brought to you by the law office of Michael S. Lamonsoff. Don't be a donkey and call my friend Michael if you've been hurt in a construction accident. 212-962-1020. That's 212-962-1020. Don't be a donkey!